interesting. I, I want to pivot a little bit and talk about leadership. Um, each of you are obviously in a position to sort of the top of the food chain uh, where you have to deal with, of course, on a day-to-day -day level, Tim was just in the back uh, taking a phone call, I'm sure dealing with something very important, probably something that has arisen fairly recently. You have to, there's a delicate dance, though, between addressing the urgent and engaging in the kind of long-term thinking that as leaders you have to do for the long-term health uh, of your companies. Um, you know, people talk about the curse of Wall Street and how that forces everybody to think in terms of quarter by quarter by quarter, and it discourages the kind of long-term thinking that's so important for sustainability. It, it, maybe it's worse in the gaming industry because, uh, at least on the casino floors, you'll often hear, so how did we do last night? What was last night? What were, what were the numbers last night? And there's this sort of constant, uh, because it's a 24-hour business, because it's uh, such a fast-moving business, it's probably very tempting to get pulled down into those sorts of, of weeds. Uh, on a leadership level, and I'll start with you, Mark, um, how do you make sure that as a leader, you engage in that kind of important long-term thinking, in addition to making sure that everything in the shop is being taken care of? Well, uh, I think I, as, a, as a tribal leader and, and an elected official of my tribe, I think one of the luxuries I have as a tribal chairman is, is part of my job is long-term thinking. Small group of leaders 
um, sort of providing that, you know, because you're obviously the most knowledgeable folks who know the whole picture, and then disseminating it, and how much of it was sort of bottom up and derived from uh, a more collaborative exercise. I'm just curious in how that nuts and bolts are. Uh, typically, it's, it's the corporate office doing that work. Obviously, we get a lot of feedback. The team there gets a lot of feedback from what's going on in the various markets, but it's our 15 top people working on it for a good couple months, putting all the information together. And then once we get the board aligned with our thinking, after we get their input, then the process is to disseminate the information down. And let let, let the, the team know, here's where we're going, here's how you fit into the, the larger context of what we're doing as a company. Interesting. Renato? Yeah, I, I fully agree with what Tim is saying. It's uh, hard to find a balance, but it takes probably some corporate decision in order to uh, allow the balance to come out. Clearly, if you uh, want to do something significant or want to uh, uh, try and release a, a quantum leap in the products and the services you provide, uh, that will probably take more than a financial year. But if you let the, uh, say, creative teams, the lateral thinkers, to do whatever they want, you get your PL killed in a very short period of time. So it's all about balance. and. Uh, and as IGT particularly, I think we are blessed uh, by a couple of specific, specific features. So one is the fact that our major shareholders have a long-term view. So yes, they do call you in the morning about uh, the, the, the previous week, previous day performance. They will be calling me about the G2E performance very soon. Sure, the moment yeah. that this will be We're finished. back on this week, yeah. No doubt, no doubt. But the other, the other key component is about the portfolio that we are managing. So and this is where the lottery part of the gaming portfolio, or all gaming portfolio, comes into, into to the place. Uh, as you probably know, the lottery business uh, shows a, comp a different competition. So we do, we compete, we do not compete in the business. We compete for the market and for the business. If you were to uh, be awarded a contract for in Florida, as where IGT likely was awarded some months ago, you stay there for nine years and then there's no additional competition before the new RFP comes out. So having a visibility, a medium to long term visibility to your revenues and to your um, uh, profits, future profits, clearly creates the condition where the difficult balance can be found. And how on earth do you disseminate information to the 300 jurisdictions that uh, IGT is in? What a complicated thing that, again, a generation ago, there was nobody in the gaming industry that had to engage in the exercise that you have to do every day. How do I communicate across 300 jurisdictions? I mean, it's all a bottom-up, top-down, continuous discussion. Actually, it's all about our daily life. So we want to uh, size opportunities, uh, put them in order, define a clear MPV, IR, uh, financial discussion on each and every dollar you spend, and then you prioritize. Yeah, it's fascinating. Look, sounds easy. Yeah, yeah, it's not. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, what an exercise. Um, well, you're in a perfect uh, position to assess this, which is, uh, once more, sort of an annual G2E exercise, Renato, which is sort of state of operator-supplier relations, right? It's a, sort of a fascinating, almost socioeconomic, political uh, assessment for those of us that look at the industry uh, and study it. Um, it obviously, there are, uh, and you've already referenced some of the uh, synergies, um, some of the ways in which you two are a B2C in some environments. Um, what's the state of, uh, of, of operator-supplier relations today and in 2016 uh, as we stand here at G2E, which symbolizes, of course, the coming together of all of those? I, I, I feel positive about it, actually. The, uh, we know we have sometimes frictions. I, I'm not going to deny that. We may be having a different view with Tim about the uh, premium recurring part of the business, about the, the pricing of our products, which is fair. Always. Always, right? Yes, so that's the, uh, the beauty of competition, by the way. We do not deny it, we do not dismiss it, we like to play to the rules. But the, uh, the thing that I like most is about the fact that A, we share a common view about innovation. So I use that word once again. Yes. And the, uh, I never had a discussion with any customer in any part of the world about pricing, any time, reasonable pricing, of course, any time we were able to show them some uh, valuable. And secondly, I think that, uh, and I'm very grateful to Tim and any other customer like Tim, I am grateful about the very clear, I like to say, harsh, ruthless feedback that we receive. 
the moment we, we get that, this is the best uh, gift that we could have. I've, I've been present for some of that. It's feedback. a present. It's a present. Yeah, it's a I'm yeah. trying to persuade all my team that it's very much so. Not everybody is still in agreement. It's hard, right? Because it's not it's easy hard. to hear. It's hard. But the, the moment you, you, let's say, remove your personal ego and you, uh, you, you understand what is the value that we receive, and then you start improving. Interesting. So from your side of the fence, Tim. Uh, it's, uh, it's an interesting journey, and it's, it's ever-changing. Uh, I think with the consolidation of suppliers in, in, in our space, um, we're, we're now at a point where we as a customer are seeing uh, the IGTs, the side games, and the others realizing that their relationship with us is, is different uh, in terms of they're providing content for online offerings. They're providing convenience gaming content providing the traditional product on, on our floors. And I'm seeing now, more so than ever, that they're, they're with all of their various products, they're treating us holistically as a customer across all of their product lines. They're not just selling us slot machines for regional gaming. It's, it's a complete package, which I, I really, really do welcome. The only, the only concern, and we've, we've seen this in the past, going back when uh, I believe IGT had Sodak, they got involved in the operation side. And now they offer some content out there that is going direct to customers. So we've got a little bit of conflict where, where we're their B2B partner, but we're also competing in the B2C world right. with them. And that's going to be an interesting dance to, to see play out over the next couple of years. It's complicated. Again, you've seen such an evolution. I want to throw something at you that occurred to me about a month ago, uh, and I promise this will come back to this conversation of management uh, complexity. Uh, about a month ago, Shanghai Disneyland opened to significant, massive, affectionate even, media acclaim. And here was the narrative. Look at what Disney has become. This is now a company in full, opening and dealing with the complexities of opening a, sh a store all the way over in China. And that store, that is a $5 billion property in uh, Shanghai Disneyland. And they're gonna employ a couple thousand people. And to my mind, I thought, well, nobody's ever said that when a gaming company has opened a $4 billion property that hires 10,000 people, or when the gaming industry goes into China and deals with the complexities there. And operating at Disneyland, let's be honest, it's all an amusement park. Right? You get a little food and beverage, you got you know, gotta sell churros. But for the most part, that's a relatively simplistic operation. I wonder sometimes whether the gaming industry is placed in proper business context. Now that, I mean, a place like City Center was twice the cost of a place like Shanghai Disneyland, and nobody raves about that, right? But look, yeah, I got really pissed off when I saw what Tesla got from the state in Nevada <laughs> to <laughs> put that battery facility in Sparks. And, and that, you know, you look at that, and you're just like, you know, our industry never gets that kind of uh, incentive to bring those jobs, to bring that capital anywhere. And it's very, very frustrating. Yeah, we, we've long noted that if a uh, you know, manufacturing plant opens in the Midwest that hires 200 people, the governor's for sure showing up to that, right? Uh, not necessarily, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, yeah but, but in your environments, you know, that, that, that can be a different thing. It's, it's, it's quite interesting. Um, anyways, yeah, fascinating and now global and complex uh, environment. Once more, Pachanga's inspired uh, tremendous uh, affection and appreciation in the press and amongst the customer base. Uh, why don't you share with us a little bit uh, about your perspective on these things here, Mark? Well, uh, I'll, I'll start with uh, mostly sunny with a few clouds. I, uh, our, our leadership team. The really, weather geek comes out. Yes. <laughs> our leadership team has, has, has cultivated very good relationships with suppliers, and obviously, there's been a lot of consolidation, as you referenced it. Um, and I, I think the main thing there is a lot of those relationships are, are intact and in, in, in place for the long term, in spite of the consolidation. So that, that's real key for uh, consistency through the industry. Uh, I will say that uh, recently we have heard. Uh, there have been a couple of challenges when it comes to securing game content uh, for the social space. Um, I'm confident, though, that our teams will go ahead and, and work through those issues. Uh, we hope that suppliers are also prepared to find better ways to assist operators uh, as the landscape evolves for all of us. And I think as we strive to continue offering best-in-class uh, products. So if you, if you walk our gaming floor, you see a great mix of the best games and content from suppliers. We also want our customers to have the same experience from, uh, in our social casino, I think. So, kind of a snapshot.